and uh, they wheeled him out in the open air and for about 30 minutes we were there together then they brought him back in and uh, we said bye in our small consultation we told the deputy speaker it's your call to tell ugandans it's you you are the one in the chair we you noticed we were very silent and for somebody who has been very active on twitter particularly ma many people were raising question why is this man so quiet what's happening but it was agreed that it was not necessary for everybody to start offering opinions in any case we had seen him alive and we had uh, confirmed that he was very sick we didn't know at that point the extent of the sickness and how much time he had the next mo day in the morning we came back this time we met the the, the lead phys physician uh, a professor at the university of washington who is at the the institute of cancer research um the the the, the fred hatch hatch it is called the Fred Hatch Cancer Research Institute. This is a prestigious institute that has three Nobel Prizes to its credit. They are at the forefront of that. That answered our question about the kind of illness the speaker was battling. It also answered our question, why Seattle? In my entire life, I never imagined anything would ever take me to Seattle, the state of Washington. On the second day, that doctor now went into real detail. He gave us a very detailed report about Jacob's uh, treatment plan, which unfortunately they were not able to embark on because that kind of treatment, which according to his efforts to explain to us, involves uh, basically harvesting cells from the patient's body, taking them to the lab, modifying them genetically so that they are armed they become sort of like soldiers that are planted back into the patient's body to now tackle the cancer cells many patients have undergone that kind of treatment and they are still alive he told us the story of a canadian lady who was also treated from that center i hear ugandan saying people are referred abroad because their health centers have collapsed I don't think Canada is one of the collapsed health centers. Uh, but that's beside the point. Indeed. We, the doctor told us uh, a, a lot about what they were planning to do. The reason we also traveled with Jacob's brother, who saw him alive and was also in the room. And uh, I don't think Jacob's brother would come and say, uh, we found our brother dead, but we were told or paid to say he's alive. Because when, when you read some of the things that are being said, you, you really wonder. For, for, for us, we've thrown them out. That's why I invited you. So was there hope at that time? Day one, there was hope. Mm. Because with... Mm. Yeah, so the, 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 the medical team thought that you could possibly harvest cells from someone who is genetically related to Jacob and then modify those cells. In that case, you sort of have a transplant also from somebody who is uh, genetically related. But the doctor told us, unfortunately, uh, Jacob's illness is so advanced and uh, his organs are in no position to take the kind of treatment regime that would revive him mm. and um, i have to let you know that many of us did not know the details of jacob's illness and uh, i am a person who believes i should talk about what i know uh, unfortunately many people want to talk about what they don't know we even as a very close friend i actually never heard from jacob telling me that he had cancer I knew, of course, that due to the beatings in Makerere 
of 1990, he, his spleen had to be cut out in uh, an emergency surgery at Mulago. Now, when you don't have a spleen, you are prone to multiple infections because those are some of the organs that, that deal with the, the germs that we all carry around. They cleanse the body and so on. And of course, many of his internal organs had been traumatized as a result of that beating on 10th December 1990. Mm -hmm. So we must actually thank God that Jacob was able to bear all that burden without sharing even to very close friends. But when his doctor in America, um, a highly qualified doctor, who is also part of the team supporting the Uganda Cancer Institute, the, the Fred Hatch Institute actually collaborates mm. with the, the Uganda Cancer Institute. So the words that were chilling from the doctor were, you have to know that Jacob is dying. And he knows he's dying. Mm. Even after he told you they want to replicate the cells. Th that was the original plan. That oh. is why they flew him. Yeah. And uh, the parliamentary health scheme has that paragraph which says a patient who is uh, eligible under the, that scheme of parliament who needs evacuation for treatment abroad has got to be taken by the fastest possible means. And I believe that's how they scrambled up mm. the Uganda Airlines to, 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 to take him out. So, so the they, doctor said, Jacob is going to sleep away any moment. And then he told us, it could be today, it could be tomorrow, wow. it could be the day after tomorrow, it could be this weekend, it could be next week, in two weeks, or even later. But we are doing our best to keep him stable and to ensure that he is at as comfortable as possible mm. in his final days. And this was on your day two. And that is when I now talk to the team leader, the deputy speaker, and the chief justice and said, I have to say something. Mm. That's when I put that tweet and I ended it with, it is well. And then Ugandan said, Mao has sent us a signal. <laughs> because of this Christian song commonly sung at funerals that it is well with my soul but it, if indeed it was a signal it was a signal that we have accepted that we are losing Jacob to me that was important for my own sake also I, I knew that this was a goodbye we didn't know it would happen so soon and we planned to see him before traveling out but after the doctor spoke to us, uh, remember his brother was supposed to remain in America. Uh, so the speaker took a decision with the chief justice that Jacob's brother should come back home quickly to go and brief the father. And uh, indeed, he traveled with the speaker. The chief justice and I remained for an extra day. Now, in the night, we... I got a call from the Chief Justice, who had been called, I believe, by the Minister of Health. And the Minister of Health had been called by the doctor while she was mid-air somewhere, probably over Russia. <laughs> because I, I doubt whether it is Ukraine, but I, I know that the plane passes via Russia, the Arctic Ocean. So she gets a phone call. She gets a phone call and she's told. And uh, she informs the president. Uh, then she calls the chief justice. I was asleep. The chief justice calls me and tells me, your brother is gone. Mm. It was a very, very sad moment. He died at about 10.50 p.m. of uh, Saturday night, mm. which here would be sort of uh, Sunday. Mm. So the chief justice then instructed me that I know you have a big mouth. You're probably going to start saying a lot, but you also know. <laughs> no, 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 one, no one had that. No exchanges, please. So uh, he, he told me, 
wait until the president has officially announced Jacob's death. The president has instructed everybody to not say anything until the family, the entire family, the children, the father, the immediate family is informed. And indeed, I just held my phone like this, <laughs> waiting to see the president's announcement. When I saw the president's announcement, then I also typed a short message, mm -hmm. which I, I then released. So, the Ugandans obviously are waiting to get the medical report from America because they spent more than a month investigating what could be happening. I think that is the credible report that Ugandans are waiting for and uh, it should be shared by professionals because these, these, these have been very complicated uh, processes over the years. The questions being asked are legitimate. I don't think anybody has a right to gag somebody who is asking a question. Uh, if somebody is making allegations saying, okay, he was poisoned, that's a different matter. But if somebody is saying, was he poisoned? The two are totally different. Mm. Now, there are those who are coming out and say, he told us he was poisoned. I once saw an article in the Observer that President Museveni orders investigation into Olanya poisoning. I don't know how far that went. But the, the, the truth of the matter is, uh, so what are we going to do about it, about this poison talk? I don't want to live in fear. And uh, I can tell you, Jacob never told me about him being poisoned. But there are those who claim he told them. I think those are the things that have to be investigated. And uh, as far as we are concerned, there are always underlying causes of death. Then there are immediate causes of death. Only the medical report detailed can answer that. Mm. But uh, I'm thankful to the capital gang for giving me the opportunity to, to share the, your, the, your the last experience. moments mm. we had with, the, with Jacob. I heard Jacob say one word, Chigamoy. He called uh, the Chief Justice by his name. I didn't hear him say any other word, but he could open his eyes intermittently. On the second day, he hardly opened his eyes. He, he could move, but he hardly opened his eyes. And the medical team told us he's heavily sedated because he was in great pain and they needed to deal with that pain and uh, so he was always getting painkillers and other sedatives uh, the daughter the doctors committed to us that they would make sure uh, he is at, as comfortable as possible and uh, his son came just before he died actually the day before he died the son who is a, a student in Atlanta, Georgia, in the USA. He is called Ezra. He had exams, but he still traveled to see his father. But Jacob didn't want the children to come, but eventually the son was already boarding. Mm -hmm. uh, another daughter who lives in uh, Arizona was also there mm -hmm. by, by his uh, bedside. And uh, of course, those of us who went there, he spoke on phone frequently with his uh, daughter, Atim. And as for me, Jacob spoke to me last on phone when he was still at Mulago, having been stabilized to be strong enough to travel for treatment in, uh, in America. And uh, we had like a five minute conversation. He told me, man, I'm like a prisoner here. People are not allowed to see me. Everybody who comes here must take a COVID test. I feel like I'm under arrest. Uh, the, that was necessary because you remember he had camped in his home and was stubborn, stubbornly refusing to leave the, the house. But it was not necessarily because of him, but uh, Dr. Cheng and the Ugandan doctors plus Dr. Rem of the Cancer Institute had decided that they could not just take him to Mulago because hospitals are also headquarters of infections. Mm. So they needed to prepare the room and that's how fast they took him to the women's wing 
the Mulago Women's Hospital, which was having the best facilities. And uh, so later they moved him to a better facility in order to stabilize him. And it is from there that he traveled. But Ugandans should know that Jacob invested a lot in taking care of himself at his own expense and probably only shared with some very close people and even then not all the details because he wanted to keep his illness private it is not for us to start talking a lot about uh, the the health of a person who did not intend that his health should be a public unfortunately he died as the speaker of the republic of uganda so naturally he is, he is a subject of discussion yeah. and, the, and if the, the country did not rally quickly to carry out these processes these are the times when you can easily have a, a constitutional crisis mm. but I can testify that he went peacefully so those who are pu publishing videos on social media bringing uh, the late Cafero's songs uh, and so on I say shame upon you Jacob died peacefully, painlessly. Okay, thank you very much.